Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Wednesday, November 16th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, today, November 16th, is uh, a special day for three members of our church. Uh, Elijah Walter's birthday today and Glenn and Nancy Van Heemst's anniversary, um, which I guess is also a special day for Joel Van Heemst. Hmm. Anyway, uh, lots of other folks uh, are rejoicing today because it's Elijah Walter's birthday. We love you, Elijah. We're so glad that you're part of our uh, church. We love you and we love your mom and dad and your brother and sister. Uh, we're so glad that you guys are part of our church. We are sad we don't see you as often as we'd like to, uh, but uh, we understand that it's it's to protect your health. So be careful and remember that Jesus loves you. Glenn and Nancy, we love you guys very much and we're so happy that you are part of our fellowship. Thank you so much for the ways that you serve, but also just for the mature Christians that you are. We love you very much and hope you have a great, great anniversary today. This morning at 9.30 a.m. is our Ladies Deeper Life Group meeting here at the church. And tonight at 7 o'clock is our Genesis Deep Dive Bible Study meeting here at the church. It's also on Zoom. The link that for that is in your bulletin. Um, and also, after the fact, it's posted up on YouTube, so you can see it there if you're not able to catch it at the time that we do it. So, Ladies Deeper Life Group this morning at 9.30, this evening at 7, the Genesis Deep Dive Bible Study. Um, I've finished with the two uh, topics that didn't get chosen for this Sunday's Ask Me Anything. So I, I thought I would uh, loop back and talk about some other questions about marriage that might be of, of interest in the, the discussion I preached on Sunday about divorce and remarriage. And, you know, I talked about how God gives us, uh, that God's intention is for uh, marriage to last for a lifetime. God doesn't unite two people with the intention of them getting divorced. Um, so divorce is always against God's best plan for that couple. But um, I also said that uh, God gives the tools to uh, couples to enable them to make it through the difficulties in their marriages. Now, uh, one of those tools that God gives, I said, is marriage counseling. And I, I've heard people say, and not uh, this week, but I've heard people say in the past, that they don't believe that Christians should be uh, should take part in counseling. That somehow uh, we're supposed to. The Christians are supposed to, um, you know, take everything to God in prayer, which is true, um, and that God is the one who helps us, not uh, not not human counselors. Um, so. I wanted to ask the question, is seeking counseling, is going to professional counseling somehow a lack of faith, that we, we somehow don't have a good relationship with God, so we need to get it from people, or somehow we don't trust in God, and so we're going to trust in people rather than God? Um, I don't think that's the case. Uh, partly, I mean, obviously, I've been a beneficiary of counseling, um, a, a tremendous beneficiary of counseling, but where do I get that from? Why do I feel that uh, counseling is is a helpful tool that God has given to Christians, even when the counselor themselves might not be a Christian. Um, I think there's two big reasons, and I want to I want to uh, talk about them this morning. One is that uh, we are called to bear one another's burdens. I think this is a great passage: bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. This, at points, seems to support counseling and seems to be opposed to counseling. So I just want to talk about this whole passage briefly. One is, uh, it's, it supports counseling in talking about bearing one another's burdens. We are called, as Christians, to bear one another's burdens, to care for one another, to lift up each other's load when it's too heavy for them to carry on their own. Um, and that's often the case, right? Uh, it's, it's said, and I think it's said wrongly, that God never gives us anything that we can't handle. Uh, that's not been my experience. It's not been the experience of many Christians throughout, most Christians throughout the ages. Uh, we get lots of things that we can't handle alone, right? But 
we're not alone, right? We have God. We, we go to God. We, we, we pray. We, we seek God's help. Um, but one of the ways that God helps us is through other people, right? Uh, people are God's me- is one of God's means for helping one another. And if we accept help from other people, it doesn't mean that we're, re- we're saying that help doesn't come from God, right? You go to the doctor to get uh, medical help. That doesn't mean you don't believe that God is your healer. In fact, that's one of the central teachings of the Christian Missionary Alliance, right? Is that however uh, healing happens, if it happens through supernatural means, if it happens through uh, medicine, if it happens through surgery, if it happens through the natural processes of the body, that healing in all those instances is a gift from God, that God is the one who gets the credit. Well, the same is true about counseling, right? As we heal, we glorify God uh, because of uh, we thank him for the good counsel that he's given us, and we also glorify God because helping one another is his way of helping us bear our burdens. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And he, he goes on to say there that uh, you know, people sometimes think that they can handle it on their own, right? Uh, they're deceiving themselves when they think that they're something when they're nothing. Uh, they don't have the sufficient resources to bear the burden that they have on their own. It says, but each one tests his own work and then his reason to boast in himself will be in himself alone and not his neighbor. It doesn't mean that the, that if you test your own work, then you won't need help from anyone else. This is saying, hey, don't judge somebody else. Uh, keep your eyes on your own stuff, right? Don't, don't judge someone else who, who needs their burden borne with them. Uh, this is saying, look, keep your eyes on yourself. Keep your nose at, on your own business. And then it says each will have to bear his own load. Now, does that contradict verse 2? Bear one another's burdens, for each will have to bear his own load. No, because there are two different words. Bear one another's burdens. Burden there talks about a, a, a load that you're bearing that's, that's more than you can bear. An excessive load, a damaging load, a punishing load, a crippling load. Uh, the load down in the in verse five is it's like a backpack. It's just a it's like a little knapsack. Each one has to bear what they're able to bear on their own, but we also bear one another's excessive crippling burdens. I can testify to you that mental illness, that anxiety, depression, uh, and many other uh, issues that people have in their lives can be a crippling load. It can be a load that is too much for us to bear. We don't know what to do, or we know what to do, but we don't know how to do it. Or when we're doing it, we find it's greater than our own strength. Uh, we feel like we're stretched beyond our ability. We feel like our emotions can't handle it. Um, and so uh, so we're flummoxed by it. Uh, but the truth is, we're not called to bear that whole huge crippling burden on our own, we are called to help bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Each one bears his own knapsack, keeps his eyes on his own troubles, doesn't judge his brother, but then also bears one another's burdens. And so counseling is a way of bearing one another's burdens. Your counselor helps to, helps to bear your burdens. Your counselor also helps uh, you to bear your own load. The, the, that which is yours, the counselor helps you bear. That which is not yours, the, the counselor helps you uh, accept help uh, from others about it. That's one thing. Uh, another, another, and but that's the, the entire thing is trusting in God, right? We trust in God to help us, and one of the ways He helps us is through each other. And, you know, the pride that causes us to reject counseling is spoken against in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 19.20, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Proverbs 12.15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. You know, uh, from the counseling side, the counselor helps to bear your burdens. But from our side, as a person who needs our burdens borne, you know, we can sometimes be so prideful that we're not willing to listen to advice. And listening to good advice is a sign of wisdom. Rejecting good advice is a sign of foolishness. So don't be a fool. Uh, If the burden you're bearing is too much for you to bear, that's okay. We're here to help bear 
with you. And, and counselors are especially trained to help you bear your own part, but also to help you uh, give off the parts that are not yours to bear. Look, we're not here to, to, to place heavier burdens on each other by saying, hey, by criticizing each other for seeking help when it's a time of need. Uh, we've got to instead uh, help one another and, and encourage one another to find the help that they need. God uses means. When we trust in God, that it means that sometimes God helps us supernaturally. And when we trust in God other times, it means that God helps us through each other. And that's part of what it means to be a part of the church. So if you're in a marriage, marriage situation and the, the troubles in your marriage are more than you can handle, uh, it's not, there's help, there's hope, there's help, there's tools. Now here's the deal. Um, with marriage counseling, obviously uh, those tools work best when both of you, husband and wife, are willing to go and uh, be with the counselor and spend some time with the counselor. Um, but some there are times when uh, there's there's trouble in a marriage and both of you aren't willing to seek counseling. One of you is in fact very unwilling. Maybe one of you doesn't see there's a problem or one of you believes that any problem should be kept uh, inside the house and it's not good to air your dirty laundry with, with strangers, right? Or they feel like counselors are just going to put you on the, on the couch and have you cry about your relationship with your mommy, you know, uh, and they've been taught that, uh, that, you know, seeking counseling is, um, is a sign of weakness. Well, you know, it's not a sign of weakness when the burden is more than you can bear to, uh, to get help to bear it. Um, and if your spouse, if you're in marriage difficulty and your spouse is not willing to go to counseling to help with it, um, then go yourself. That's what I would say. You think go yourself, get the help you can get from a counselor, even if it's not as ideal as both of you going to counseling, uh, get the help that you can while you can. Okay. Hey, if you are a member of uh, New Beginnings Church and you're in need of, uh, of assistance in finding a counselor, talk to me. Right? We'll help you find a counselor. If you can't afford to pay for it, we'll help you pay for it as well. We want to make sure that uh, you get the help that you need to get the advice that you need to get, that we can help bear your burdens in that way. All right? Uh, well, I uh, wanted to say that uh, the, the uh, topic for Sunday's sermon, the last Ask Me Anything sermon, is actually connected with this. Is anxiety a lapse of faith? That's, uh, today I'm talking about marriage counseling, but you know, with with anxiety, uh, it's it's about counseling in general. Is anxiety a lapse of faith? We'll be talking about that on Sunday. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in your love for us, you do help us. And part of the way you help us is through other other people. Thank you for trained people who have taken the time to learn about how human minds work who've taken the time to learn how human bodies work and who can bring some wisdom to the conversation that maybe everybody doesn't have to offer. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to uh, humble our pride when we need help and to seek it and help us to remember that that's the way that you designed the system to work. Not that we would bear our burdens alone, but that our burdens would be borne uh, with a brother or sister uh, or more than one brother or sister. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to seek counsel when we need it. I lift up Elijah Walters to you. Thank you for him. I pray that you bless him on his birthday. May he have much joy and know that he's loved by you and by your church. I pray for Glenn and Nancy Van Heemst on their anniversary. Please encourage them and strengthen them. Thank you so much for the, the godly testimony of their marriage. And I pray that you'd bless them today in every way. In Jesus' name. Be with the Ladies Deeper Life group this morning at 930. Be with the Genesis Deep Dive Bible Study at 7 tonight. May uh, our explorations of scripture together be a blessing uh, in your sight. May we be blessed. May you be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.